The stranded Iconian princess's final distress call from her vessel's cold dead husk flickered light years across the galaxy, and greedy alien eyes shut tight in response as every sapient race refused to help, citing the lethal Xiphon Nebula's dangers. Only the humans, known across Iconian space for their ruthless warrior culture that practiced ceremonial cannibalism, would dare take this impossible rescue mission, not for altruism, but with the goal of ravenously devouring the juicy royal flesh and costly ship parts as compensation. Randy Adams, a battle-scarred merc, chugged a salty drink in the dingiest dive bar this side of the Horsehead Nebula. He eavesdropped on a cackle of tentacled freaks gossiping about Princess Hydrus's cosmic mayday from beyond the Xiphon's roiling red clouds. The slime-coated aliens poked each other's oozing flesh as they snickered. Oh, who gives a creptox ass about some spoiled royal brat? Her daddy can buy another daughter if he misses her that much. Going in there is suicide, one of the blobs spat in a crackling language. Guess that's why they sent it out on all channels. They're hoping some dumb mammal will take the bait, another said. Randy let them laugh, gripping his mug, and imagining crushing their boneless bodies into goo. He waited until they quieted down. Then he leaned over, his massive figure eclipsing their table. "'What did you say the coordinates of her ship were again?' Randy asked. The aliens stopped giggling. "'Forget it, ape. We know human mercs are desperate, but even you aren't crazy enough to go in there. You'll get torn apart before you smell her sweet royal blood. Xiphon's pirates will mount your bones in their hulls as a trophy.' Randy smiled. His sharpened tungsten teeth— the trademark of human mercs glinted in the bar's low light. The surgical mods helped his kind cement their reputation as the most ruthless killers in the universe. I think I'll take my chances. I'm guessing the Iconians will pay their daughter's weight in Iridium just to have someone find whatever's left of her, Randy said. They're not going to care about my dietary habits when I'm the only one with the balls to do this job. The aliens rattled their eye stalks in their species' gesture of mocking laughter. Randy let their guffaws follow him out the bar's swinging doors. He strode across the sandy hellscape of Gehenna Six towards his ship, his armoured boots crunching volcanic glass to dust beneath his feet. The job ahead would be the most dangerous thing he'd ever done. The Xiphon Nebula killed even the hardiest spacecraft with its waves of cosmic radiation and asteroid fields and Randy was hated by every pirate clan in the quadrant for his penchant for eating his captives alive. The scum out there would target him for carnage and consumption the moment they saw his craft. As Randy fired up his quantum engines, he couldn't help but grin. Sure, death waited in that nebula, but if rescuing the princess was easy, every jellyfish from here to Alpha Centauri would have done it, and if Randy pulled this off, the paycheck would be big enough to buy a planet. His cybernetic muscles flexed as he cracked his knuckles over the console, plotting a light-speed course through the Horsehead Nebula's twisting clouds and into Xiphon's hungry crimson maw. It was only the slimmest of chances, but if a human couldn't do it, no one could. Randy swore he'd be the hero Hydrus needed, or he'd die trying. He imagined sinking his sharpened teeth into her flesh as a bonus if all went well. He hit the accelerator and blasted off. Randy's fingers tightened around the controls as he maneuvered his ship through the Xiphon Nebula's swirling clouds of crimson and violet. The cosmic radiation battered his hull, his shield struggling to compensate. His eyes flicked between his viewscreen and his sensors, searching for any sign of the princess's vessel. Suddenly an alarm blared. An unknown ship was approaching fast. Randy's heart raced as he watched it emerge from the nebula's depths, its sleek Iconian design unmistakable. It was a warship, bristling with weapons that could tear his craft apart. The comm crackled to life, and the sneering face of an Iconian commander filled his screen. Human! the commander spat, his eyes narrowed with disdain. You are trespassing in Iconian space. Prepare to be boarded and your vessel seized. Randy's jaw clenched. Wait, you don't understand. I'm here on a rescue mission. Princess Hydrus sent a distress call from this location. I'm here to save her. The commander scoffed, his lip curling. You expect me to believe that the princess would send a mere human as her rescue party? No, 
I think you're here to pillage and steal, as your species is wont to do. Randy tried to protest, but the commander cut the transmission. A moment later, the warship opened fire. Randy cursed, his hands flying over the controls as he tried to evade the onslaught. His ship was fast and well-armed, but it was no match for an Iconian warship. Alarms screamed as his shields rapidly depleted under the barrage. With no other choice, Randy sent his ship diving deeper into the nebula, using the swirling gases to cover his escape. The warship pursued, its weapons fire illuminating the clouds around him, but eventually he managed to lose them in the nebula's depths. As the alarms quieted and he assessed the damage to his ship, Randy's mind raced. Why would an Iconian warship attack him if their own princess was in danger nearby? It didn't make sense. He pulled up his star chart, studying the sector. There used to be an Iconian military outpost here, he recalled, but it had been abandoned decades ago, or had it. Randy directed his sensors towards the location of the derelict outpost, hidden within a particularly dense pocket of the nebula. As he filtered through the interference, his heart skipped a beat. There, amidst the gas and dust, was the faint ping of a distress beacon. It had to be Hydrus's ship. But as he moved closer, his sensors picked up other signatures. Energy readings too strong and numerous to be coming from a derelict outpost. It seemed this place wasn't as abandoned as the official records claimed. Randy leaned back in his chair, his mind spinning. Was this a trap? Had the princess's distress call been a ruse to lure him here? Or was she truly in danger, and these mysterious Iconians were somehow involved? He had a choice to make. He could risk approaching the outpost to try and rescue the princess, potentially flying straight into a deadly ambush. Or he could turn tail, cut his losses, and run. Randy's fist clenched. He had never been one to shy away from danger, and if the princess really was in trouble, he couldn't just abandon her. But the stakes had just gotten a lot higher. Whatever was waiting for him at that outpost, he had a feeling it wouldn't be friendly. He took a deep breath, his resolve hardening. He had come this far. He wasn't about to turn back now. Slowly, cautiously, he guided his ship towards the derelict outpost, ready for anything. As he approached, he... Randy knew he was taking a massive risk, but the potential payoff was too juicy to ignore. He guided his ship into the derelict outpost's docking bay, the darkness swallowing him like the maw of some great beast. His cybernetically enhanced senses tingled as he stepped out onto the metal grating, the air thick with the stale scent of abandonment. But as he moved deeper into the shadows, he noticed subtle signs of life, scuff marks on the walls, the low thrum of power conduits, the sharp tang of recently discharged blasters. The hairs on the back of Randy's neck stood up just before the ambush struck. A dozen armed Iconian soldiers emerged from the gloom, their weapons leveled at his chest. A woman stepped to the front, her eyes glinting with cruel amusement. Well, well, she purred, the human walking into our trap to save the helpless princess. How predictable. Randy's muscles coiled, ready to spring into action, but the leader simply gestured to a nearby door, her smile widening. She's in there. Go on, be her hero. Every instinct screamed at Randy to fight, but he was committed now. He had to see this through. Warily, he approached the door, his hand hovering over his blaster. The metal slid open with a hiss, revealing a dimly lit room beyond. And there, bound to a chair in the center, was Princess Hydrus. She appeared unharmed, her regal features composed despite her restraints. Randy hurried to her side, reaching for the bonds, but as his fingers brushed the metal, Hydrus's eyes flew open, wide with terror. You fool, she hissed, you've doomed us both. Randy realized his mistake a heartbeat too late. As he touched the restraints, a powerful electric current surged through his body, frying his cybernetic implants and sending him crashing to the floor. His vision went black the smell of his own burning flesh following him into unconsciousness. When Randy came to, he found himself in an energy cell, his weapons gone. Princess Hydrus was slumped in the corner, her wrists raw from the restraints. Beyond the shimmering barrier, the Iconian leader stood watching them, 
her expression one of smug satisfaction. There never was a distress call, she said, answering Randy's unspoken question. The princess stumbled upon our little operation here. We couldn't let her leave, of course. But then we thought, why not use her as bait? Lure in any would-be heroes, tie up our loose ends. She leaned closer, her breath fogging the energy barrier. The Iconians pay well for discretion, mercenary. A pity you chose the wrong side. Randy met her gaze, his jaw set. He may be bruised and beaten, but he was far from broken. I wouldn't count me out just yet, he growled. I'm full of surprises. The leader threw back her head and laughed, the sound echoing off the metal walls. Oh, I'm counting on it, she said, her eyes glittering with malice. I look forward to breaking your spirit and your body, piece by piece. With that, she turned on her heel and strode away, leaving Randy and Hydrus alone in the humming silence of the cell. Randy slumped against the wall, his mind racing. He had walked right into their trap like a damn rookie, and now not only was his own life on the line, but the princess's as well. As He glanced over at Hydrus, taking in her regal bearing the way she held her head high despite the dire circumstances. I'll get us out of this, he promised, his voice low and fierce. Somehow, I'll get us out. Princess Hydrus's eyes flashed with anger as she turned on Randy in the confines of their energy cell. This is all your fault, you muscle-bound oaf. I can't believe I trusted a human to rescue me. You walked right into their trap. Randy scoffed, his voice a low growl. Oh, that's rich coming from you, princess. If you'd been straight with me from the start, maybe we wouldn't be in this mess. But no, you had to play your little games, keep your secrets. Well, look where that's gotten us. As they traded barbs, Randy's cybernetically enhanced vision caught a faint shimmer in the corner of the cell. His words died on his lips. Leaning close to Hydrus, he whispered urgently, We're being watched. There's a surveillance device. Hydra's eyes widened fractionally, but she quickly schooled her features. They couldn't tip their hand. Randy raised his voice, injecting it with disdain. You know what, princess? I've had just about enough of your high and mighty attitude. When I get out of here, I'll... You'll what, ape? Grunt and scratch your way to freedom? Hydra sneered, picking up on the ruse. As they sniped back and forth, Randy subtly tapped a code against Hydra's arm. Lockpicks, cybernetic arm, he signaled. Hydra stiffened slightly, then responded in kind. Transmitter in pendant. Needs charging. A plan began to form. They would have to bide their time, let their captors think they'd broken them, give Hydra a chance to charge her distress beacon. It was a slim hope, but it was all they had. Over the next few interrogation sessions, Randy played up the image of the brutish human mercenary. He spat curses at their captors, straining against his restraints with exaggerated aggression. He took the brunt of the leader's sadistic attentions, his cybernetic enhancements allowing him to endure more than an ordinary man. All the while, Hydras huddled in the corner of their cell, seemingly too shattered to even look up, but beneath the curtain of her hair, her fingers worked feverishly at her pendant, coaxing the transmitter to life. After a particularly brutal session, the guards dragged Randy's limp form back to the cell and tossed him inside. He crumpled to the floor, blood seeping from a dozen wounds. Hydrus crawled to his side, cradling his head in her lap. Now, she breathed, her voice scarcely a whisper, it's now or never. Randy's eyes fluttered open, glazed with pain, but his bloodied lips curled into a smile. Slowly, painstakingly, he reached into a hidden compartment in his cybernetic arm. His fingers emerged clutching a set of delicate lockpicks. As he set to work on the cell's lock, Hydrus kept watch, her heart pounding. Randy's hands shook, slick with blood, but he persisted. The lock was complex, the tools slipping in his weakened grasp. Just as despair began to set in, a soft click echoed through the cell. The lock sprang open. At the same moment, alarms blared throughout the outpost, a cacophony of wailing klaxons and stampeding boots. The transmitter, 
Hydras gasped, a wild hope surging in her chest. They're coming for us. Randy hauled himself upright, swaying on his feet. Hydras ducked under his arm, taking his weight. The cavalry better hurry, Randy grunted, his breaths coming short and sharp. We've got a welcoming party to attend to. Hydras's eyes glinted with a hard light. She reached out and snagged a jagged piece of metal from the floor, the edges sharp as a blade. Then let's not keep our hosts waiting. Together they staggered out of the cell, ready to fight their way to freedom or die trying. Randy's eyes darted around the smoke-filled corridor. As he and Hydra sprinted through the outpost, the sound of blaster fire echoing behind them. They paused at a junction, chests heaving. Randy bent down, snatching a pulse rifle from a fallen Iconian soldier, its barrel still warm. He tossed it to Hydrus before grabbing another for himself. Control room, Hydrus panted, checking the weapon's charge. We can hold them off from there until help arrives. Randy nodded, wiping blood from his brow. They burst into the control room, slamming the door shut behind them. Randy jammed his rifle into the locking mechanism, fusing it closed. They overturned tables and consoles, creating a makeshift barricade. No sooner had they taken position than the door shuddered under a barrage of blaster fire. The acrid smell of melting metal filled the air. Randy and Hydrus returned fire, red bolts sizzling through the growing holes in the door. How long until your people get here? Randy shouted over the din of battle. They'll be here, Hydrus replied through gritted teeth, ducking as a chunk of the barricade exploded near her head. Wave after wave of soldiers poured through the disintegrating door. Randy and Hydrus fought with desperate ferocity, the floor growing slick with blood and spent power cells. But for every soldier they cut down, two more seemed to take their place. Randy's rifle clicked empty. He lunged forward, using it as a club to crush a soldier's skull before snatching up the man's sidearm, but the tide was turning against them. A blaster bolt seared through Randy's already injured leg, sending him to one knee. Hydrus cried out as a shot grazed her shoulder, her weapon clattering to the floor. Just as the soldiers closed in, a deafening explosion shook the outpost. The soldiers paused, looking around in confusion. Then, through the smoke, came a battle cry. Iconian loyalists stormed into the room, energy blades flashing and pulse cannons roaring. At their head was Zora, her face a mask of cold fury. She carved a path through the rogue soldiers, her blade a blur of light. The soldiers broke and ran, no match for the ferocity of the loyalists. In the chaos, Randy caught a glimpse of the rogue leader fleeing down a side corridor. He tried to give chase, but his injured leg buckled beneath him. He could only watch as she disappeared into the shadows. As the fighting died down, Zora approached Randy, her blade still humming. She looked down at him, her lip curling. "'You've done well, human,' she admitted grudgingly. "'But don't think this changes anything. "'You're still an outsider, a primitive. "'You don't belong in our world.' "'Randy, exhausted and blood-soaked, simply nodded. "'He knew he would never be truly accepted by Iconian society. "'He limped towards the door, ready to leave this nightmare behind. "'But Hydras caught his arm. "'I won't forget what you did here,' she said softly, "'pressing a data chip into his hand.' This contains information on the rogue faction that captured me. I have a feeling they won't stop with just one failed plot. If you ever need assistance, call me. I owe you a debt. With that she was gone, swept away by her entourage. Randy stared after her for a moment before hobbling back to his ship. As he settled into the pilot's seat, the adrenaline began to fade, his injuries making themselves known. He plugged in a course back to human space, eager to put this whole ordeal behind him. But as he prepared to engage the warp drive, a message pinged on his console. It was from an anonymous source. Randy's eyes widened as he read it. It was a list of names and locations, the leaders of the rogue faction. The message read, A gift from a friend. Happy hunting. Randy leaned back in his chair, a grim smile spreading across his face. He plugged the coordinates into his nav computer. Perhaps there was a place for him in this universe, after all. Not as a hero, but as a hunter, 
stalking the shadows to keep the peace in his own brutal way. As his ship blasted into warp, Randy reflected on the harsh realities of life on the fringes of space. No happy endings, no true allies, just the next job, the next hunt, the next fight. This was his life, and he wouldn't have it any other way. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.